welcome back to the crossover. We've got Avi here in his, one of his books uh, of, of many that he's written. And uh, Avi, you were just sharing with us about Quran, Old Testament, the New Testament. Where, where are you going with that? Okay, well, before the break, we were talking about how basically the problem of Islam, the threat of Islam to Israel, to the United States, to the world, is a three-dimensional problem and that you have to know the Old Testament, you have to know the New Testament, and you have to know the Quran and the Hadith. When I come to the Christian churches, the Christians know the Old Testament and New Testament, but the Christians know not about the Quran, and I explain this to not. them and the Hadith. Jewish people know neither the New Testament, neither the Quran, right. neither the Old Testament. Okay. Now, add to that, there's another problem. The Jewish people in America uh, have been so blessed by the United States so blessed by the American people that because the professions were opened up to the Jews, all the professions, unlike in Europe. In, Euro in Europe you had all different types of castes and systems and ghettos and, and guilds and Jews were not allowed to participate freely in the life of the society. So the American Jews today have placed the career mm. in front of everything. Um, as a matter of fact, Jewish people today get married much later in life than their neighbors, the Christian neighbors, because Jewish people have to send their kids to schools, uh, second degree, doctoral thesis, uh, doctors, lawyers, and what happens many times is that the biological clock ticks, and so Jewish people get married very late, uh, usually not to a Jewish spouse, because once you get married, you're going to marry somebody in your profession, or in your office, or in your clinic. Um, and so Jewish people have very few children because of the lateness of the marriage. Uh, usually the children are intermarried with the Christians. Right. Um, and uh, another problem also is that uh, Jewish people uh, adopting the liberal agenda uh, have come out basically against the Christians when it comes to abortion and homosexuality and the conservative political agenda. Right. Uh, so to make a long story short, I think God is saying to those Jews who do support homosexuality or uh, uh, the abortion or the career, all three things, the career, homosexuality, and abortion, are three depopulating systems. In other words, the Jewish people are the most rapidly dwindling ethnic yes. group in America today. They're assimilating and disappearing. Not only this is assimilating, they're disappearing because Jewish people do not reproduce. Uh, because of the career, or abortion, or homosexuality. Yeah. So, whereas there were six million Jews in America at the end of World War II, today there are only five million Jews in America, and you have to add to that the millions of Jews who came here after World War II from Israel and from Russia and other Argentina and other countries, there should have been 10, 11, 12 million Jews in America today, there are only five million, uh, because the Jews have opted to disappear. So Do you I, mean not call themselves Jewish anymore? Just no, no, no. They call themselves Jewish, but the point is a population to survive has to reproduce more than 2.2 per family. Okay. You follow what yeah, I'm saying? Sure. And so many people are not marrying. Many people okay. are marrying but not having children. And gotcha. then if they have children, they have one or two children, and then they marry Christians. And so basically the Jewish people will no longer exist in the United States within a generation or two. Uh, that's why I go to the Christians. Because the Christians, like I said before, they know the Old Testament, they know the New Testament, and with a little preparation and training on Islam, they understand the nature of the beast. Yes. And then the Christians can be and must be called upon to stand for Israel, stand with Israel. That's why it's called Christian revival for Israel's survival. Mm -hmm. And um, if, of course, if the Jewish communities invite me to speak, I'm more than pleased to because the Jews are my brothers. Uh, but the Christians are also my brothers and sisters. So the Christians receive you well, I, I know that. Yes. And so, again, how is Israel receiving that message? Do they see the brotherhood of these Christians that um, uh, obviously were labeled wrong from the Holocaust? We know these were not true Christians. Do, is there a turnaround in Israel towards the, the American, to the Christian, the world, world okay. Christian? This is a very important question, very essential, and I'm going to try to answer it. The population of Israel, the Jewish population of Israel, is fairly evenly divided between two geographical areas. Half of the Jews of Israel come from Islamic countries, including people like my wife. The Jews who came from Islamic countries know nothing about born-again Christians or evangelicals or even the Western Messianic groups. The Jews of the, on the European side who live in Israel came from Russia, Ukraine, Poland, Romania, where, where the persecution of the Catholic Church and the Russian Orthodox Church was so great 
that uh, th there is a, indeed a, a hostility towards Christians, especially those who are Holocaust survivors. And again, the commonality of these two Jewish populations in Israel is that neither of them have any exposure to the Protestant churches in America. And by the way, when I say Protestant churches in America, I know today of many Catholic churches that are preaching the love of Israel, thanks to the Protestant vanguard. Hmm. The Catholic Church has made very long strides now wow. in the United States. And even the, uh, I think it was Pope John XXIII, was the one who 40 years ago adopted the Nostra Aetate, which basically delivered the Jews from the claim that they killed Christ. Uh, uh, so the Protestants dropped that nonsense a long time ago, but the Catholics only dropped it 40 years ago. Yes. So the Catholic Church is now growing, in, I would say, into a more pro-Israel position. It's still ambivalent because of its political power in the Vatican. Uh, and I'm trying to reach out to the Vatican, to the Pope, to meet with him because mm -hmm. the political party that I'm forming in Israel yes. will be a political party, including Catholics, too. We'll talk about that in a uh, but what I'm trying to answer your question about the... Uh, uh, the idea in Israel of uh, uh, whether or not the Jews of Israel should love the Christians. So you have basically three different groups. You have the Russian uh, Orthodox, you have the Catholic, and then you've got the Western Protestants. The Israelis don't have a clue who they are. Okay. Uh, now, uh, in that sense, there are organizations in Israel which I support, like Christian Friends of Israel, Ray and Sharon Sanders, the Christian Embassy, um, uh, Bridges for Peace, uh, Jan Willem van der Hoven's International Christian Zionist Center, uh, Tom Hess, International House of Prayer. Mm -hmm. There are many, many different Christian groups, and there are many I haven't mentioned. So these are all in Israel, These are These are Western, yes. Protestant, evangelical, born-again organizations that I love. I work with them. and um, So Israel is seeing the hand of the Christian in okay. Israel. Okay, now what's happening in Israel? There are people, certain rabbis. I don't want to say the rabbinate. There are certain rabbis and there are certain socialist, communist, elitist people who control the Israeli government who are now forming an alliance, Orthodox rabbis and communist socialists, forming an alliance against the Christians from the West for two reasons. Of course, the socialists don't like the Christians. The Israeli government doesn't like the Christians because mm -hmm. the Christians are saying, don't give the land. Right. Okay. The and so the socialist communists say, who do the Christians think they are okay. to tell us not to commit suicide? Okay. You can obviously tell what my political view is yes. about dividing the land. Yes. And of course, away. the rabbis who are against the Christians are against the Christians for religious reasons. That, that 2,000 year, year bad history, bad right. blood between Jews and Christians. Now, my approach is Israel of 5 million people, this is getting back to the very beginning of your interview with me, 5 million Jews are not going to cut against 1.3 billion Muslims whose religion tells them to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Okay. We, if we have 100 or 200 million born-agains on our side, maybe we can do it. But we cannot expect the born-agains to stand with Israel if in Israel we have socialist communists in the government and we have rabbis who hate the Christians Experiment. and are basically shooting us in the foot. Okay. In other words, we may be right to hate the Christians, we may be right, but we may be dead right. When God made the earth, he chose one small portion of land where his plan for the world would unfold, the land of Israel. This is the promised land. You uh, wrote a very powerful book which aligns with uh, exactly that. And it's, and, and it's bridging the gaps between Jews and Christians. And it's, it's called Israel, the Blessing and the Curse, or the Curse, pardon me. And Bill, what inspired you to first of all write this we were seeing some remarkable things happening in, in Israel and I, I didn't have a, a handle on it at the time but I was introduced by uh, to a fellow named John McTurnan who'd been watching things since 1991 and what I mean by watching things is every time the United States politically applied pressure an American president applied pressure in Israel catastrophic things happened in the United States we're talking about some of the largest most significant events in U.S. recorded history. Uh, for example, October 30th, 1991, President Bush's father started the Madrid Land for Peace Conference. Basically, Israel, you give up the land that you obtained in the 67 war, and Israel will be guaranteed peace and security. At the time President Bush was giving this address in Madrid, Spain, the perfect storm, which had developed in the Northeast Atlantic, out of nowhere, rather than going from west to east, went east to west and slammed into the New England coast. At the time of President Bush's speech, 
sending 35-foot waves into President Bush's home. This, is, this was an enormous storm, made movies and books and things like that mm -hmm. about the event. Next year, when they moved Madrid to the United States, the day it convened in Washington, D.C., the largest storm in U.S. history, Hurricane Andrew, pummeled uh, Louisiana and especially Florida. And when Israel's property is at risk, the United States property is at risk. When the United States presidents are applying pressure on Israel to give up the covenant land, when I say covenant land, the land that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their descendants, when that land's toyed with, the U.S. property is under attack. It's incredible. It's, a, it's, it, it's so responsive. It is time for us with a vision of hope to come alongside and give strength to bring forth the birthing of an establishment of God's promise in the state of Israel. But there will come a day when there may be wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and earthquakes. There may be challenges, and it seems desperate. But it says that in the midst of that, there shall be a budding forth of the fig tree. The budding forth is meaning the beginnings of. And we know that in 1917, the budding forth of the Balfour Declaration declared that the children of Israel should gather from the four corners of the world back to the land of Palestine, the land that had been promised to the people of Israel. And as the church and the United States and others began to stand with Israel, God continued to bless. But then there was a maturing process. And finally, the official state of Israel in 1948 became established and recognized by the nations of the world through the United Nations. And the nations that stood with Israel saw the establishment of a prophetic promise come to pass again. But we must continue to stand because God's word will not come back void. It shall go forth until it is accomplished. It's time now to bring Israel into a place of security and support and hope again. And it's the Church of America that needs to rise up and speak for our brothers and sisters and support in action, not just in words. We hope you enjoyed our show with Avi. And um, you can see the importance of the Christians and the Jews being united in these days. Yes, and for those of you who want more information on Avi's website, which is at the bottom of the screen, he has Five Deceptions of Islam and a Lesson in History, which are free downloadable uh, audio files. Thank you for staying tuned to the crossover, and shalom. Shalom. Join Mitch and Rosalie as they reach an ever-growing worldwide audience through the crossover. We invite you to become a crossover partner right now by calling the number on your screen. For your monthly gift of $30 or more, you will receive the crossover partnership pack, which includes a DVD of today's program, a personal greeting and prayer message from Mitch and Rosalie, more information about the Crossover Project. As you continue to support the Crossover each month, you will receive a new Crossover DVD, a monthly ministry report, and your name will be added to the healing room. Call now or log on to our website and join the growing family of Crossover Partners.